name. Phineas Stonemars. The chaos of wars brought a new wave of refugees to these shores. Our streets are safe no more. This is our city! They will never accept us. They will never understand us. It's time for a fresh start. Gold you don't know, do you? No what? Philo's alive. You're police? I'm in charge with finding the man responsible for these attacks. You're alive. You left me in the ashes of my homeland. This is where we come In the dark and futuristic neo-Victorian city of Burge, a series of events will make black fantasy mix with reality. Burge has become a refuge for fantasy creatures who have fled their respective war-torn worlds. But everything will get complicated when a dangerous serial killer begins to hunt down non-humans. Police Inspector Rycroft Philistrate will be in charge of investigating the latest case, the murder of a dancer, and although the inspector tries not to get personally involved in the case, he will soon discover that it is not easy to separate feelings from work. Rycroft Philistrate reads a scientific science fiction novel about a man who, traveling through the empires of the moon, falls in love with a princess. History that Vignette Stonemoss, the pixie of Tirnanak, recognizes in a legend typical of her town. A castaway who reaches the shores of the land of fairies and falls in love with the queen. From this union a single offspring is born who will never know his father because, longing for his native land, he has left. The stories, I paraphrase vignette sayings, travel through time and men to return centuries later redefined. A kind of cycle in which myths are rewritten or reimagined for each generation. The iconotropy or movement of the symbol will in some way be the basis of the story of Carnival Row, the series created by Travis Basham and Renee Echevarria. Sometimes poetic, other times crudely, the stories are intertwined in an overflowing tapestry of colors and actions that gets lost in its own threads, and trap they languish almost in melodrama. From myth to police thriller, from adventure to political drama of glittering corridors. A clash between Verne and Conan Doyle, Celtic folklore with Jane Austen. The rereading of the archetypes that could have been. The expansionist policies of the Berg a city of kilometer-long proportions that emulates the European metropolises of the late 19th century, in particular London with clear steampunk hints, has taken them to the lands of Tirnanog, the now non-mythical country of fairies and fantastic creatures that can be found in Celtic and, of course, Greek traditions. Acting as protectors, they fight against the pact in a war that they will humiliatingly lose. Seven years later, thousands of refugees are crowded on the streets of the Berg, Pixies, fawns, and other types of beings that flee the devastating policies of the pact in search of new horizons. On the streets of the Carnival Row neighborhood, police detective Rycroft Philistrate pursues a fairy serial killer, in a crude version of Jack the Ripper who terrorized the streets of Whitechapel in 1888. That neighborhood is the ghetto in which the refugee creatures survive, all of them packed in the filth and coal smoke, in the hostile discrimination of humans at the mercy of the extreme moral poverty of the city. There they die dismembered without anyone caring, but also from hunger and abandonment. In the cold forests of Tirnanok, Vignette Stonemoss is a trapper who hunts her kind for human traffickers who sell them into the city as servants or low-ranking employees. The fateful turns of the world, these two ex-lovers find themselves at the moral antipodes, although they maintain their rather muddy ethics. Basham and Echevarria, with their carnival row, build a devastating parallel with many of the topics that populate the news in newspapers today. Immigrants, xenophobia, poverty, the excessive hysteria of right-wing extremists. And, above all, taking once again the imperialist mode of the late 19th century of the European nations, the paternalistic policies with nations that were supposed to be poor or underdeveloped. They will do so in three plot lines. Rycroft Philistrate and Vignette Stonemoss in the mudflats of the neighborhood discovering the enormous revolution that is simmering between serial killers, mafias, witches and brothels. The brothers Ezra and Imogen Spurnrose, dealing in their well-to-do middle class with social forms, with the stained glass of their civilized order that will be disrupted by Agrius Astraon, 
a millionaire fawn who moves into the house next door. And the political plot of the high spheres starring the Chancellor of the Burg, Absalom Breakspear, his wife, the bon vivant of his son and his political opponent Ritter Longerbane. Clear and almost enumerated, they will come together in a choral drama, all materialized in a fantastic steampunk universe, gray, noisy and grimy. Of course the myths will be there to bear the weight of so much hubbub. Sometimes wisely, other times just making an almost painful effort at abstraction. Because the rewriting of today's evils, based on the stories of Tir Nanag and his brushes with mortals of mediocre spiritual flight, gradually becomes an impractical scramble not only of genres, but also of how the topics are developed. The project that took years seeking to be produced has gone through so many instances of writing that somehow it seems to get lost in the importance they propose in each topic. Each scriptwriter or producer has reaffirmed a scenario, losing the story that should be told, amidst so much denunciation and comparison. Everyone shouts at the same time, everyone interrupts each other and we don't manage to size them up. There the machinations of piety Breakspear lose intensity. The discussion of discrimination, persecution based on creed, race or color, the search for a place where one can be happy with the one you love, the interesting idea of civilizations, remotely dissimilar, coming together, building a new world, religious fanaticism versus the hypocritical secularist. It is a careful production, which we all understand was intended to be the next Game of Thrones, as if it were possible with only politics, sex and fantastic worlds, Forgetting that the construction of a story and the characters that populate it require development time, which it is not, all the hot topics and now, forgetting the evolution and linkage that can occur if they are portrayed with patience. Orlando Bloom and Cara Delevingne, Jared Harris and Indira Varma, Tamsin Merchant, Andrew Gower and David Giassi, draw crowded characters in which only their acting effort manages to balance between so many feelings and sensations and although the plots evolve clumsily, some of them deserve, due to its almost literary proposals, be taken into account. Anyway, and now leaving this carnival row alone, because it also deserves to do so, it is a proposal that demanded too much. It set so many goals that it seems to get lost in them, forgetting that there is a story to tell for the viewer's entertainment. More is not better, not even when the production in sets, costumes and other technical sections becomes the star and not a means.